Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside the Box Dioramas. I've titled this diorama The Basement. I really enjoyed making this little piece and I'm excited to be able to share it with you. So let's go. So it all began by making the floor. I went for the proven effectiveness of plaster because I really like the way it soaks up washes and reacts realistically to light. Here I'm using a pre-sized piece of board that I'm going to use as a template to cut the plaster mould out of some foam board. I then slipped a piece of plastic under the foam board to act as the base of the mould. I didn't film the making of the plaster, so check out my first video to see how I make my plaster mixes. And after the plaster has dried, I just popped it out of the mould and removed the excess chill fabric. The plaster was then given some cracks to add interest to the final floor. I just bent the plaster, then scrubbed the cracks with a toothbrush which helped to open them up a bit. I created some texture on the floor with a toothbrush. This brings out the sand granules in the plaster. Next, I applied a wash using a black model wash diluted with water. I go quite heavy with the water and apply multiple washes. I like the way the plaster soaks the washes randomly so you get different effects each time. I usually pre-soak the plaster with water but this time I applied the black wash directly to the dry plaster to get a more mottled look. Now I can't explain why I did this here, but I'm laying down some masking tape to create a painted line. I guess it all adds up to the detail in the end though. The basement needs three internal walls, one for each side, and then the front facing wall which will contain the doorway for the stairs. The base for the walls is made out of MDF, and before I make the mould for the walls, I just needed to see if everything fits okay and to get some perspective on what the final layout will look like. The walls are made in exactly the same way as the floor and painted with a diluted wash. Now the wash doesn't look particularly pretty, but it's there to give any parts that show through the upcoming paint a concrete look. And that green paint is just me experimenting off camera. I'll cover that up later. Now this is a technique I've seen in lots of videos. You grab some baking paper and cover it with the colour of your choice. I'll be adding three layers to the walls, so my first layer is a cream colour. I then placed the wall on top of the wet paint and left it to mostly dry. I then peeled the baking paper off to reveal an old painted wall effect. As you can see, the results on each wall varied greatly, but I got the best results when I peeled the baking paper off just before the paint completely dried. Now for the second layer, which is green. And the third layer in white. By the way, I left each layer to dry before laying down the next. I wanted to bring each layer out in random places, so I lightly sanded each panel until I liked the result. And this is what I ended up with. I really like the big chunks of paint that fell away with the sanding.
Finally, just to take down the brightness of the paint a bit, I wash the panels down with some diluted black wash. Here I'm cutting some strips to make the window frame for the right hand side wall. This will be used to fit the glass into later. Now I'm making the door frame. Just some bolster strips cut to size with a black wash applied before gluing into the frame. Now that the window and door frame are dry, I'm adding some crackle finish to give them a bit of texture. The crackle finish is then topped with some white acrylic paint and left to do its thing. I'm using the same technique to the walls of the staircase, so more on this crackle finish soon. And here's the finished structure of the basement area. The weathering and other effects will come later. Next I got started on the stairs. The steps are made from 1.5mm hobby wood cut into strips. I found using reference photos of real stairs helped with this process, because I wanted the stairs to look as realistic as possible. To make sure each step was as similar in size as possible, I used the first strip of wood as a template for the rest. And after the strips were cut out, I lightly sanded the edges. In this step, I'm creating a slight overhang that most stairs have. I found that a couple of old cards provided the right size and used them as a guide. And here's the first finished step. Now I just repeated these steps to make the rest. I tend to go a bit nuts with reinforcing things, so here you can see I've glued some balsa to the underside of each step. After that, I just needed to glue each step to one another to create a staircase. I used a piece of balsa as a spacer to get a consistent space between each step. And here's the finished staircase. Off camera, I made the landing at the top out of 1.5mm wood board. And on the back is some more over the top reinforcing. All along, I knew I wanted to create those pings of light you see when light shines on a real staircase. To make the nosing, I used some thin aluminium sheeting that I found in the hardware store. I cut out a workable square to make the strips. A piece of the same size wood that was used for the stairs was used to gauge the width of the nosing. The first step is to create the 90 degree angle and it's best to do this before you cut the strips. Here I'm scoring the metal so that it bends easier. Then lifted the edge with a blade. I then smooth the edge with something that's readily available on the floor of my place, some Lego. Finally, I cut off the strip. This takes a few goes and your blade doesn't last long so I suggest not using your best blades. And here we have some finished nosing. I'll cut these to size later when they're needed. It's back to the staircase, this time making uh, this part. And it's made out of the same hobby wood board used for the landing. After priming the staircase, I painted a base coat of white acrylic followed by a coat of green. I varied the mix of green paint with white to avoid the steps all being one tone. The parts were then glued together to complete the construction of the staircase. Next, I started on the walls of the stairs. I needed to make three walls, one for each side of the stairs and one for the far wall. 
I use some scrap wood boards for this. At this stage, I have planned for the walls to have a cracked paint look. And for this to be effective, the undercoat needs to be fairly dark. So I gave the working side a coat of burnt umber. With the base coat dry, I can apply the crackle finish. This is something I just chanced upon in Kmart and thought I'd give it a go. What you do first is to apply a layer of crackle finish to the surface and paint over the top. Once the crackle finish is still tacky, I applied the paint layer. In this case, just an off-white made from white and hemp colours. And remember that you need to apply your paint quickly before the crackle finish dries. Then just sit back and watch the cracks appear. And this is the result I ended up with. I must admit this is a little bit overboard because most of this effect will be covered by stickers soon. But I'm happy that the small gaps I'm planning on leaving will show this effect through. Here I'm marking out the stairs as I won't need to cover this part. Then giving the area a quick wash with diluted black, just to dirty up the white paint a bit. I got some printed labels from an office supply store and printed some random posters I found online. As you can see, I've gone for a Japanese theme. The stickers were cut to size and placed randomly around the wall. I overlapped all the stickers to give the feeling of posters being placed on the wall at different stages. I ended up covering pretty much the whole wall and this is the result. I then repeated the process for the other two walls. Now this is where that cool, worn, torn poster effect comes from. I use an old toothbrush, dip it into some water and then start lightly scrubbing the stickers. I then keep dipping the toothbrush in the water and scrubbing until I get the look I want. I repeated this process for the other two panels. Next, I added a thin layer of weathering to the stickers using these colours, just to give the posters a more aged look. And these are the finished panels. Nothing fancy, just trying to dull down the stark white of the stickers. Now to add the finishing details to the stairs. First, I attach the aluminium strips I made earlier. The strips are glued down using super glue. Finally, I'm using chalk pastel powder to weather the stairs. I think pastel powders are great for weathering, particularly if you create dioramas that don't need to be touched. Because as you'll see, I'm not going to seal this weathering layer. Here I'm just mixing dusty colours of burnt umber and ochre. Off camera, I've added some stickers to the steps. This was a bit of an impulse after seeing this in a reference photo. I then just keep layering the powder until I got the aged effect I wanted. Then it's time to assemble and glue in the parts. I started by securing the left hand wall and the stairs. I did this first because I needed access to this panel to attach the handrail and to do some extra weathering. You can see I've laid down some floorboards at the bottom of the steps and I was going to keep them but then decided that the concrete look should continue up to the steps. So I poured some more plaster into the space. Now onto the handrail and I must admit this was a bit of an afterthought but I wanted some more metal in the stairway for the light to reflect off. I made the handrail out of a barbecue skewer 
which I bent into shape over the edge of a table. Attaching the handrail to the wall was a bit of a challenge. I ended up drilling some tiny holes into the wall panel and pressing in some nails. I then attached the handrail to the nails with some super glue. And after all that, here's this stage finished. Next, it was a quick and easy process of attaching the back wall panel. Followed by the right side. And that's the staircase section done, which means the basic structure of the diorama is now complete. Okay, now on to weathering the basement section. Again, I'm brushing on some brown and ochre pastel powder to get the effect. I'm mainly trying to create a sort of vignette, where the edges and corners of the walls and the floor are the darkest. I then added some more stickers to the basement walls, and this is the result of this stage. The stickers were then aged using the water and toothbrush technique. Okay, here come the boxes. You can check out my video on how I made these on the channel page. So here I'm deciding on the final arrangement of the boxes. I wanted them to have a discarded feel, but I was also thinking about how to get some cool angles that would help catch some glints of light and make some interesting shadow shapes. For the window, I bought these microscope slides which are basically really thin pieces of glass. Perfect for dioramas. I placed some sticky tape on the back and cracked the glass. I then weathered the glass with some paint and glued it to the outside of the window frame. Here's a piece of plastic mirror that I attached to the back of the window. My aim for this was for the mirror to reflect some light and add a bit of interest to that side of the diorama. Here I'm gluing the diorama to a proper base. Now I'm moving on to the ceiling of the diorama and to install the lighting. I've cut out a piece of black foam board with a slot for the light fitting which I cut from a random bottle top. This is a piece of packing strip that I've punched some holes in. This will help diffuse the light strip that will be placed on top with the LEDs aligned at the holes. I picked up this lighting strip from Ikea and it works perfectly for what I need. Here I'm assembling the ceiling. The light strip is placed over the stairway and the rest of the ceiling is made from more foam board. I didn't want to permanently seal the ceiling just in case I need access to the diorama in the future. So all I've done is fix it into place with some masking tape. And finally, the lighting strip is slid into place and fixed down with more tape. Off camera, I made the box to house the diorama. The box is made from plywood and painted with a coat of high gloss black. And at the back, I notched the space for the light strip to be connected with the power cable. I also added a slot for a second light strip to be inserted, and I'll show you what this does in some of the later shots. And on the side are some metal strips that will be used to connect the frame. The frame is made from a discarded picture frame that was sized to fit and painted in the same gloss black. On the inside of the frame, I embedded four strong little magnets that will clip onto the front of the box. 
This will give me easy access to the diorama later if I need it. Lastly, I cut some glass to fit the frame and that's the diorama finished. And that's the diorama finished. Here are some shots in natural light. These next shots are why I originally created this diorama, to be seen in the dark. Thanks everyone for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this build. I'm off to make another diorama so I'll see you in the next video.